I thought it was a lovely aircraft, and I still think so. I think it's the only aircraft that's, that, to me, fits the, the name of aircraft because you you sat in it and you flew it uh, and uh, you felt that you had wings you coming out of you your shoulder. Do you think you asked to do? It never let you down? Nor did the other Sorry, aircraft. I have no eyebrows. I had them burnt off at Darwin, but they were a beautiful thing to fly. It hogs the limelight. It gets a lot of glamour, I suppose, with a and a profitable one. But it's the means to an end to preserve and maintain the warbirds of World War II. This graceful machine is the only Spitfire flying in Australia, the Tiger more than on which he learned to fly. A beautifully restored North American Harvard. An Australian-built Mustang, the fighter with seven-league boots. Under restoration, a Curtis Kitty Hawk. And most ambitious of all, a Japanese Oscar Mark I. Its fuselage is corroded and its fabric is tattered, but he aims to restore it to flying condition. He believes that it's senseless keeping planes like this in a museum Part gathering aviation dust. heritage. They were made to fly, and Colpe intends that all of them will fly. He's a doer rather than a the fact that most of the rivets on the wings and fuselage had corroded. Spitfires were built with magnesium rivets on a stressed aluminium skin. It was a weight-saving idea, but unfortunately... It's an impressive, it's an impressive lineup, lineup of fighters down the ages, from the F-18 to the Mirage, the Sabre, the Vampire, the Mustang, and the Mark 8 Spitfire. 